To get started in Mini-Z RC racing, all you need is a Kyosho rear-wheel drive Mini-Z ready set, rechargeable batteries and a charger, softer tyres and a timing transponder. Keep watching to find out more. Hi, I'm Jars. Thanks for tuning into this video, which is a guide on what you need to buy to get started in Mini Z racing. I got into the hobby of Mini Z RC cars two years ago, and for the first year, I didn't do much racing. But over the last few months, I've raced twice a month, and it's been really fun. What's great about Mini Zs compared to larger scale RC cars is because they're small, you don't need a lot of room, and they can easily be raced indoors. Also, the entry costs are cheaper compared to larger scale RCs, with an entry cost of around 380 to 400 Australian dollars to get set up with what you need, with just a ready to run ready set and a few extra parts your car will be competitive enough to race and win in a box stock class just a warning though once you get into the hobby it's really easy to get sucked into spending more and more as there are so many aftermarket parts available to improve the performance of your car and it's also tempting to purchase more cars so you can race in more classes firstly if you want to get into mini zrc cars i suggest you check if there's already a club near you that races mini z's as i've personally found the hobby to be way more enjoyable when you race with others I've seen a number of people buy a Mini Z or two then eventually get bored as they haven't found a racing club or scene in their area. So if that is the case for you, it may not be worth it. But in saying that, I've also seen people just enjoy the hobby collecting cars and bodies without racing them. And because Kyosho releases new bodies every few months, the hobby is still exciting for them. In my case, there was no club near me for Mini Z racing, so I ended up buying my own track, starting my own club, and I've been hosting events twice a month and we're all really enjoying it and slowly growing in membership. So anyway, let me help you get started in the hobby. RC racing, including Mini Z racing, is conducted in categories called classes. Examples of classes include box stock, stock, super stock, open, modified, or in Japan where Mini Z's originated, they run classes such as novice, front wheel drive, narrow touring, and open. Each class has different rules for the car parts and modifications that your car is allowed to have. When you join in racing at a club, you need to find out what classes they run, choose which classes you want to race in, and set up a car that fits within those class rules. A race day or a race night for a club usually consists of some practice sessions, then qualifiers where you run qualifying heats for each class, then finally races which are called mains. And depending on the number of drivers, you might just have a single race which is called an A main, or if you need to split the drivers up into multiple races, you might have a C main, B main, or A main, where drivers are split up depending on how they qualified. So yeah, and that's pretty much how an event runs. In this video, I'm covering what you need just to get started, which is to get a car running in a box stock class. This class is basically a fresh Mini Z out of the box where minimal upgrades are allowed. In my club, for example, in our box stock class, the only things you can change or replace are the wheels and tires, the front springs, and the T-plate and you're only allowed one modification which is called the kingpin flip mod and that's basically it. Your club might not run box stock and just run the next class up which is stock. That's still okay as a box stock class car would still fit within the rules for stock but it will just be a bit slower. So now I'm going to go through the only things you need to get a car that will be competitive in a box stock class. First you'll need a Kyosho rear wheel drive Mini Z ready set which is the MR series. There is the MR01 and MR02 which are older discontinued models. So you need to buy the current model which is the MR03 which has been current for the last 10 to 13 years or so. Here's an example, this one is an MR03 with a Mercedes AMG body. It says RWD in large font on the box which means rear wheel drive and if you look here it says MR03. This is sold as a ready set which means it is ready to run. It comes with the car chassis, the body and radio transmitter and a few extra parts, so all you need to add are batteries to get it running. Four AAAs for the transmitter and four AAAs for the car. Don't get the all-wheel drive series, which is prefixed by the letters MA, such as the MA020 or MA030. These are designed and more suited for drifting and most likely are not allowed in the box stock class in your club. Most Mini Z racers across all the classes use rear wheel drive cars and you'll only see all wheel drive cars used in a specific all wheel drive class or in an open or modified class, so stick with a rear-wheel drive Mini Z to start off with. Mini Z ready sets come with a range of different car bodies and they all look great. Just pick an MR03 ready set with a body that you like the look of, because in box stock class the performance is similar between all the bodies. Different bodies within the MR03 range have different motor mounting systems for the motor. One thing to note is that the body you get will dictate the motor mount your chassis comes with and the wheelbase length. 
The most common for racing is the MM motor mount, wide front end and 98mm wheelbase. Let's take a look at what's in stock at the moment in Australia as I make this video. So looking at Campbelltown Hobbies which is a store in Sydney and they have various MR03 ready sets but the prices vary depending on which body you get. Looks like the prices range from about 250 to 290 Australian dollars and I've even seen them cheaper on eBay during sales for about $230. So let's just say for a Mini Z ready set, you're looking at about 260 Australian dollars. Tires are the only upgrade you really need when you're starting out. This upgrade is not optional, it's mandatory because the tires that come in the ready set are of too hard a rubber compound that they don't have sufficient grip on the commonly used foam RCP tracks in Mini Z racing. Therefore, you must replace them with softer tires straight away. It's interesting that Kyosho don't already include soft tires with the car. In my experience, the stock tires are only useful on smooth concrete and not much else. For Mini Z's, front and rear tires are sold separately as the front wheels are narrower than the rear wheels. The wheels are 8.5 millimeters in the front and 11 millimeters in the rear. So you'll need to buy one set of front tires and one set of rear tires. When you're looking them up to distinguish between front and rear tires, look at the description. You may notice front tires are listed as narrow, front, 8.5 millimeters, or just say Mini Z tires. And for rear tires, they may be listed as rear, wide, or just say 11 millimeters. You also have to select the softness or hardness of the tires you are buying. This is described as the temperature or shore, which is a rating for the hardness of the rubber. Softer tires have more grip than harder tires. They may be listed as a number in degrees, for example, 10, 20, 30, or 40 degrees, where the lower the number, the softer they are, or they may be listed in words such as super soft, soft, medium, or firm. Tires may also have a tread pattern described as radial or no tread pattern, which are called slicks. A general guide a lot of drivers use for tyres is to use one level softer tyres on the rear compared to the front. For example, super soft rears and soft fronts, or soft rears and medium fronts. Over time you'll figure out what suits you best, but when starting out, here are some go-to recommendations followed and suggested by many drivers. There are three brands regularly recommended for tyres. They are Kyosho, PN Racing or Marker. If you want to keep things simple, go with Kyosho. I recommend 20 degree wide rears and 30 degree fronts. Doesn't really matter whether you choose radials or slicks. If you want to go with PN Racing, look for KS or KSM compound tires and I recommend super soft rears, soft fronts or soft rears and medium fronts. For marker tires, I've only tried the rears, haven't tried the fronts yet, but I recommend a five degree rear, which you can get as a slick or a radial or also the 10 degree slicks. Then for the front tires, use a harder compound marker tire or a tire from the other brands. Any of these recommendations I just gave will be great for starting out. PN Racing and marker tires are sold in packs of two for around 10 Australian dollars a pack. Kyosho tires are sold in packs of four for about 20 Australian dollars a pack. So for one pack of front tires and one pack of rear tires, you're looking at 20 to 40 dollars. AAA nickel metal hydride rechargeables are another item you need to get straight away. A set of batteries can last about 20 to 40 minutes, so if you use single use batteries, you'll chew through a lot quite quickly. Some clubs only allow rechargeables to be used in box top class. It's fine to use single use batteries in the transmitter though, as they last a while there. During a club event, it's common for drivers to switch out batteries between practice, qualifiers and races, using each set for less than 10 minutes per charge. So it's good to have multiple sets. All brands will generally work well and they come in a range of capacities. Lower capacities in the 700 to 800 milliamp hour range are said to be more punchy with less runtime, whereas higher capacity batteries in the 900 milliamp hour range will have longer runtimes but less punch. Here are some of the batteries I use. IKEA Ladder, Eneloop and Eneloop Pros, Vada or 1.2 volts. And my favorite batteries are the PN High Power 750s, which are actually 1.25 volts. Also got some Kyosho Speedhouse 800s, which are really good too. I recommend you get three or four sets when starting, costing about $20 for a pack of four. And a cheap charger like this one can be found for about $20 or so. So all up, you're looking at about $80 for three packs of batteries and a charger. Finally, you need a timing transponder if you want your lap times to be counted. 
Find out what timing system your club uses and get a compatible transponder. This Easy Lab transponder costs about $35. So that's everything and when you add it all up it comes to a grand total of 395 Australian dollars. So that's everything you need to get started in box stock class. After you get all this you don't need to buy any more upgrades. Uh, what you need to do is work on your driving skills. So work on your driving and lap times and practice as much as you can and when you consistently get your lap times within five tenths of each other, for example 10 second lap average and they're all falling within say 10.0 to 10.5 seconds, so uh, 5 tenth range, then you know your driving is getting decent enough and maybe it's time to put more effort into tuning and mods and working your way to racing up into the next class. So you don't have to buy any more upgrade parts at this time but I mean if you really want to here are some things you might want to consider. Front spring set, carbon fiber T-plates, a foam stand to put your car on and a mini Z tool set to make working on it easier. Anyway that's it for this video, I hope this video helps you get into mini Z racing. If you found it helpful please hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos and I'll see you in the next one.